Sam Altman is looking to raise five to seven trillion. Yes, that's trillion with a T to improve the world's compute situation. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Siki Chen tweeted this morning, you think you're pretty ambitious, and then you see Sam Altman fundraising for like 10% of global GDP. The story that he's referencing came out in the Wall Street Journal late last night and is called Sam Altman Seeks Trillions of Dollars to Reshape Business of Chips and AI. So let's go back and give this a little bit of context and then just talk about what the new information suggests about Altman's ambitions, as well as the larger landscape for AI in society. When Sam Altman was being fired from OpenAI, we never really got a good justification or explanation of what the reason was. The OpenAI board, of course, said that they had lost confidence in him, that they didn't think he was being truthful. And it appeared later on that perhaps part of the issue was around how Sam was using the OpenAI name to potentially raise money for other non-OpenAI projects. Now, this would later be something that Sam Altman would strenuously deny saying very clearly that everything was related to his core project, which was OpenAI. But one of the things in question was a big AI chip initiative. Now, it is of course no secret that the availability of chips has become one of the major constraints in the development of artificial intelligence. This is why we're talking about ARM stock going up 50% in a day. It's why NVIDIA has been one of the best performing stocks of the last year. And over the course of the end of last year, we got a number of different reports about conversations that Altman was having, particularly with Middle Eastern funders, as well as SoftBank's Masayoshi Son, about the potential for funding some new big chip initiative. That was about all the information we had. There were some intimations that Altman wanted to focus on the US, although he was thinking in terms of a global network of chip fabrication plants. And there were also some indications that he was talking with TSMC about potentially running the firms. Now, what wasn't clear was how much this was meant to be some big competitive endeavor to undercut or take out NVIDIA. It was sort of presented like that in media, which makes sense given that every big tech company is also racing to build their own chips, so they're not totally dependent on NVIDIA or AMD. And so I think that some people assumed that Altman was just coming for NVIDIA and Jetson Huang. The new reporting from the Wall Street Journal paints a very different picture That, while, again, we don't have anything confirmed from Altman himself, strikes me as much more resonant with the approach that it seems likely that he would take. The WSJ piece kicks off. Sam Altman was already trying to lead the development of human-level artificial intelligence. Now, he has another great ambition, raising trillions of dollars to reshape the global semiconductor industry. So the big new thing here, like everyone noticed right up front, is the absolutely eye-popping amount of money that Altman is apparently talking about. $5 5 to $7 trillion. Global GDP is around $84 million, so we're actually talking about 6 to 8% of global GDP for this project. Now, to put this in context of the current semiconductor industry, last year, global chip sales were $527 billion. That number is expected to rise to $1 trillion annually by 2030. And on top of that, semiconductor manufacturing equipment was another $100 billion industry last year. That means that Altman is talking about 10x, roughly, the current size of the entire semiconductor industry for this project. Once again, as the WSJ writes, the amounts Altman has discussed would also be outlandishly large by the standards of corporate fundraising, larger than the national debt of some global economies and bigger than giant sovereign wealth funds. Once again, the reference points they draw on are corporate debt issuance in the U.S., which totaled $1.44 trillion last year, and the combined market cap of Microsoft and Apple, who are the two biggest businesses in the world, which equals $6 trillion. Now, if you watch Altman at all closely, it's very clear that he has already zoomed out to a world in which the two biggest bottlenecks on the abundance that he sees coming from AGI are compute and energy. In fact, he said exactly that much in conversations at Davos earlier this year. Now, on the energy side, in a number of startups that are focused on things like nuclear fusion, he said explicitly again at Davos that he believes that an energy breakthrough is going to be needed to achieve the energy profile that we need for advanced AI applications. It was really interesting, actually, when he was asked about whether he was concerned about the environmental impact of all of this new AI compute power being brought online. He said he wasn't because it, by definition, required an energy breakthrough, which would make that not an issue. It's clear that this effort is focused on the other side of that equation, access to compute. And what I believe is made clear from the scale that he is apparently talking in is that this is absolutely not, in any stretch of the imagination, an endeavor that Altman is imagining as somehow him or OpenAI competing with NVIDIA and trying to beat them out in the market as it's currently organized. Instead, it reads much more to me like a global Manhattan project or a global Marshall Plan, I don't know, pick your analogy from around the World War II period, to get 
everyone aligned, and I mean everyone, funders, industry, governments, to build the capacity to have as much compute as the world is going to need and can make good use of. Now, certainly it appears that he's thinking in those governmental terms. According to people familiar with the matter, he recently met with Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo to discuss this. In other words, this isn't Sam running off to the Middle East for some Abu Dhabi fantasy. He's thinking about the depth of partnerships that it would take at the highest governmental levels. OpenAI didn't deny that these conversations are happening. A spokeswoman said, OpenAI has had productive discussions about increasing global infrastructure and supply chains for chips, energy, and data centers, which are crucial for AI and other industries that rely on them. We will continue to keep the U.S. government informed given the importance to national priorities and look forward to sharing more details at a later date. So again, to me, this very clearly is not another new business line for OpenAI. This is OpenAI trying to use the leverage that it increasingly has to be a catalytic force for fundamentally changing the compute landscape. And the piece also did come with more confirmation about who Allman has been talking with. The Commerce Secretary part was a new detail. But it does appear that there have been lots of funder conversations in the UAE, that SoftBank has been involved in the discussions, and that TSMC is being looked at as a potential partner to actually build dozens of chip fabrication plants across the world. Now, one blocker is that while Altman would like to have many of these plants be built in the U.S., where, of course, the U.S. government is already investing and expecting to invest even more into chip manufacturers to fund new factories, there are some fairly significant challenges. As the WSJ writes, those companies face challenges expanding in the U.S. TSMC, for example, has pointed to delays, a shortage of skilled workers, and high costs at its $40 billion project in Arizona. There are also the political issues of getting this deeply involved with funders from the Middle East. We've profiled in the show about how controversial G42 has been. G42 is an Abu Dhabi-based company that partnered with OpenAI back in October, but which has also been the subject of some serious scrutiny from members of Congress around its potential ties to the Chinese Communist Party. The point being that this is an incredibly ambitious plan that is challenging from the standpoint of not only capital, not only talent, but politics as well. Indeed, it may be even more ambitious in some ways to get the amount of governmental cooperation that would be required for this as it would be to go out and find 8% of global GDP to fund it. Still, if you had any doubts about the scale of ambition of Altman and the folks who are most at the cutting edge of the artificial intelligence movement, this story, I think, shows just how world-changingly, let's say, they are thinking. I will, of course, bring you any new details as they come up, but for now, that will do it for the AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.